Hello everyone, welcome to Manual Software Testing Interview Questions Part 5 and in this video I am going to cover another 10 very important manual testing interview questions which are displayed on the screen. So the, in the part 5 we are covering questions from 41 to question 50 and the questions will be basically something around pesticide paradox principle, exhaustive testing, different software development approaches, V model, difference between a V model and waterfall model, what what is agile what is agile software development what do you understand by scrum and then uh, a scenario based question where wherein you could be asked can you explain the test process used in your current project which is mostly for the experienced team candidates or experienced testers and then what do you understand by requirement analysis and what is test planning right so let's get started and let's go to the first question so the first question or 41st question is what do you understand by pesticide paradox principle and how to overcome it okay so pesticide paradox principle uh, if you would have gone through my ISTQB series or the manual testing tutorial series which is published fully on the channel I've explained about the pesticide paradox principle right so the seven principles of testing so what exactly pesticide paradox principle is all about so for example I'll take a real example if you have a crop okay you are growing a crop and over the period of years you use the same pesticide on that particular crop then the effect of the pesticide over the period of years gets reduced because the pests get resistant to that pesticide right so over the period of years you have to keep changing the pesticide or do some changes in the in the pesticide so that you can or so that the pests are not used to it or basically they do not get resistant to it so that is the whole principle and it came from this crop thing itself so pesticide and the pro, uh, and the pests so so it doesn't matter wherever you are using the pesticide if you are doing the same if you are using it same again and again over the period of time it will become ineffective because the pest become resistant to it and same thing same principle applies to your test cases as well why because if say for example you have the same set of test cases that you have prepared and you are executing them over and over again as a regression suite and you are not doing any changes in the test cases and you are not updating those then you are not going to find any new bug okay so you have to make sure that over the period of time as your product matures as your software matures and you are adding more functionality the previous test cases that you have the regression set that you have you make sure that you keep updating those adding more edge cases and scenarios so that you can basically go ahead and find new defects right it's it's if you're using same set of test cases you are not going to be able to find any more new defect and that's what the pesticide paradox is all about okay so this is what the principle is and this is what it means in software testing okay now is exhaustive testing possible 42nd question this is very important so many times you might be asked that is is it possible to do you know full sort of testing or test each and every combination when we say exhaustive testing can you test every everything in an application right each and every combination so testing everything all combinations input output everything precondition is not feasible right it is not feasible except for very very trivial cases right very trivial cases for example you just have you know a combination of inputs which is just uh, if you do permutation combination the outcome is just 10 or 20 all over combination for to test it right so yes you can do those 10 20 but assuming or uh, in case the the combination permutation combination usually in applications if you try to see the permutation combination it will be massive okay it will be massive thousands thousands of combinations so that is why exhaustive testing is not possible right so in order to answer Answer this particular question you can clearly mention that exhaustive testing is not feasible except for trivial cases right except for very minimal cases wherein the combination are very few you can yes you can say yeah, I have exhaustively tested this particular module this functionality because only trivial only little amount of or little number of permutation and combination combination were there but for the overall application is it feasible no not at all it is not feasible because you will end up just executing all those scenarios and combinations without getting 
getting any extra benefits and that's where test design techniques are helpful to get you the maximum coverage with minimal sort of test cases which will give you maximum amount of coverage if you design and plan your test cases well so exhaustive testing is not feasible except for very trivial cases okay now moving on to the 43rd question what are different software development approaches so that's another very important question now different software development approaches there are many waterfall software development approach v model which is an extension or you can say which is basically uh, was came up uh, it came up v model came up to overcome the limitations of the waterfall software development approach then we have iterative development approach which is again uh, an improvement or to overcome the limitations of old development approaches like v model and waterfall model and the most recent one is agile software development approach which is very widely followed and scrum framework is a uh, scrum framework of agile software development approach is the framework that is very widely used across the industry in software development landscape okay there are other software development approaches or uh, agile software development approaches like kanban rapid application development rat and extreme programming and there are others as well so you can go ahead and google around but this should be good enough to um, make sure that your understanding about software development approaches is there for the interviewer now on the same question you can elaborate a little more that waterfall de software development was more on uh, as the as the name suggests it was more of a phased approach right step by step so one step got completed then second step so basically when requirement are frozen then design will happen when design is done then a development will happen when development is done then testing will start so it was very phased approach right and there the the problem with this approach was that the feedback from the customer uh, or the production deployment was far away six to six months to 12 months and because of that the feedback from customer was very late in the cycle and say for example you have done all the development work for 12 months and customer saw the product and he said no this is this is basically not what i wanted right this is something which is not as per the expectation so that triggered a lot of rework okay so that's where waterfall development approach was very uh, limited okay and uh, had a lot of shortcomings in there so to overcome that v model came in picture and v model the approach was to start testing as early as possible and include testing in every phase of the software development life cycle so software the testing was included into the requirement a design and all of the phases and along with those phases testers used to write specific test cases for each of those phases but then still it has the the release cycle were still long and because of that it was also having a lot of limitations then came iterative development approach to release the functionalities early in in iterations in short cycles so that feedback can be uh, feedback was available from the customer early okay and then agile software development is an improvement over iterative development approaches and because agile is also iterative you, you have sprint by sprint right so two to four week cycle and these features are developed in these iterations or the product features are developed in, into the iteration so feedback is available very early along with this iterative development approach agile has lot of other principles and practices that are followed into scrum kanban rad and xp which enables team to work collaboratively okay work together come up with the issues early so that they can be fixed in the requirement phase itself in the design phase itself before they go ahead into the before they get in, introduced into testing and deployment or final release itself right so that's the whole advantage of agile software development approaches so these are some of the different software development approaches so moving on to the 44th question so 44th question is how is v model different from waterfall model right so the differentiation so as i explained in the previous question also waterfall model was very phased approach so you had a requirement phase once the requirement phase was frozen everything finalized only then design can start right so once sign off has been re received for the requirement then design will start when sign off has been received for the de design then development will start when development is complete then testing will start so it was you know very phased approach the waterfall model now the disadvantage of the waterfall model was that the release or uh, testers used to get the first set of products 
product to test very late in the cycle right the involvement of testers was very late and then the feedback from customer was very very late after product deployment the feedback from customer used to come whether the software is fit for use or it's not it's it fulfills the customer requirements or not so in order to overcome that v model came in picture wherein testers involvement was supposed to be right from the beginning right from the requirement phase design phase so that's where v model came in picture and in v model involvement of testing team was from the early phase of the software development rather than having a siloed testing team which used to get the product to test late in the cycle they were involved in every phase and in each phase they used to write the test cases accordingly and share the feedback as well that's where the v model came in picture and v model uh, solves many of the limitations that were there in the waterfall model so that's how v model is different from waterfall development approach so moving on to the 45th question what is agile okay so now when we talk about agile people think that agile is scrum agile is agile software development it's not okay agile is different when we just say agile term it's different right agile has its specific meaning Agile, if you search the plain English meaning of Agile, it is the ability to create and respond to change, right? That's what Agile is. And Agile is the way of dealing with and ultimately succeeding in, in an uncertain and turbulent environment, right? So how flexible are you or your team to deal with any of the unforeseen circumstances, situations, and then succeed in those circumstances and situations? That's what Agile term is. Is all about right ability to create and respond to change right if say for example if you say uh, am i agile or not as a person right so you can have the same test on yourself as well say for example you are put in a difficult situation you are in the class you have been asked a particular question okay or you are are you able to you know um there is a there, there is an exam that needs to be conducted for a particular set of syllabus right and then suddenly the syllabus has changed are you able to cope up with that change of syllabus are will you be able to respond or you will you be able to prepare quickly on the change syllabus and respond to that change or you will be having a uh, in a big trouble or you will feel that i'm not able to going to do it or i'm not able to cope up with this change syllabus change at the last moment right so this is the ability of a person in a in an education sense i would say in an exam sense uh, similar thing in the sports you can see how uh, flexible a person is right uh, can you deal with the change and then adjust accordingly and then eventually succeed or not that's what agile is and agile software development came from the same term right so when we say agile software development that's different but people use it uh, interchangeably uh, but that's actually not correct so uh, if somebody says what is agile um, then you have to explain what is agile and then elaborate on that that yes based on the same agile principle the principle of agility agile software development came in picture right so agile software development based on the agility principle or agile principle wherein agile software development is basically an umbrella term okay it's 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 also not scrum not kanban it's an umbrella term for agile software development frameworks like scrum kanban xp so all of these scrum kanban extreme programming these are all frameworks for agile software development okay so agile software development when the teams use agile principles and values that are defined right so there are um, four core values and principles in agile manifesto that are being defined any framework any agile software development framework that embraces those values and principles is agile software development framework so scrum kanban extreme programming these are all agile software development framework when we say agile software development it is the umbrella term wherein any framework could be used right if any framework uses agile values and principles that is agile software that project is following agile software development approach okay so any agile software development framework embraces the values and principles defined in agile manifesto for agile software development 
okay so that's the difference between agile software de development and agile now the next thing is what exactly is scrum so scrum is a framework scrum is agile software development framework kanban is agile software development framework now framework provides you a structured approach to deliver something right to do something to store something okay when we say a, a house framework okay when you when you are building a house when we say framework framework is a structure that gets built for the house on which you lay your uh, lay your base right and then you you lay your roof accordingly then you have you know a structure to uh, plan where your uh, kitchen will be where your rooms will be so that's that's what the framework usually is right in terms of constructing a house similarly a scrum or kanban or extreme programming they are all agile software development framework it is one of the so scrum is one of the agile software development framework scrum encourages team to learn through experience right self organize and continuously improve so scrum has certain so scrum embraces the values and principles or defined in agile manifesto manifesto for agile software development and then also provides the structured approach or the process for teams to follow so that they can deliver the software in agile software development okay so that's what the scrum is now the 48th question can you explain the test process used in your current project right now this question if you if you say for example you are a fresher right this might not be applicable if you are fresher you might be asked something like can you explain me the test process okay so you should know what test process if you are a little bit experienced they can tweak the question a little bit and they can say can you explain the test process which is used in your current project okay so the the test process is standard right if you are doing the right thing you will mostly follow the standard test process it doesn't matter which project you are working right if you are not doing the complete test process properly then you are missing on some of the key things that need that are already defined in the test process right so it doesn't matter whether you are already working whether you are a fresher you should ensure that you are following the test process the standard test process and in the standard test process there might be some tweaks or some changes that you can do as per your project so to answer this question you can say yeah in my project i am um, we, we start with the test planning right uh, uh, analysis and planning so we we go ahead and we do uh, the planning what exactly needs to be done okay which is the responsibility of the lead and the manager once they do the test planning or they come up with the test plan uh, after that we are involved as a tester we start with the test analysis uh, analyze the user stories the requirement and then come up with the scenarios then go ahead and design the test cases that are required once all the test cases are designed reviewed by the leads and manager and other stakeholders if required then we enter into the test execution phase after ensuring that test environment and other prerequisites are met we go ahead and execute the test cases and then based on the exit criteria that is being mentioned whether the test pass or fail accordingly we mark the test pass and fail raise the defect if the test case has failed follow the defect life cycle and ensure that the relevant defects are also uh, fixed uh, along with that test execution and the process journey or the test process journey and then eventually once everything every test case has been executed and uh, the overall scope has been completed in terms of test execution then test reporting happens which is test completion report or test summary report is being created and which contains what all test cases have been executed what was in scope how many passed failed defects how many have been raised uh, what is the current status of any uh, any defect whether if they are open have they have the exemption has been received for that from the stakeholder so all of that goes into the test report and then finally test closure for that particular particular phase okay so this is standard test process which does it doesn't matter you are a fresher or you are working in any of the project you will more or less follow the same test process in each of your project whether you are doing agile whether you are doing other, any other software development approach now i have been asked this question many times that in agile you have only two to four weeks sprint 
when do you do test planning right so test planning in agile is not about that you write those 20 pages test plan in each of the sprint in agile in scrum you do test planning to ensure that whatever stories are there in that particular sprint do you understand them do you know when you are going to start executing that do you know who is going to start executing that do you know what are the prerequisites what will be the test environment requirements so all of this is test planning right is planning to execute those user stories in those two two week cycle so it is not about preparing that 20 30 pages test plan that was very common in waterfall approach so 20 30 page plan you need to prepare for the full release which is three months or six months might be that that particular release but in each sprint you still have to do a brief planning wherein you specify how you are going to approach testing what is in scope what is out of scope who is going to test what right so that is the level of planning that you need to do in agile software development approach during your test execution or during your testing right within the sprint so it doesn't matter which approach you are following test planning is still required doesn't matter how long the release is how short the release is if it is short it's a low level planning it's it's basically a very minimal sort of planning if it is a longer release then you need a more broader level of planning with more data in there okay so that's what the test process is all about now the next question is 49th question what do you understand by requirement analysis okay so requirement analysis is to define analyze validate and align stakeholders right so when we say requirement analysis um, it is more of see mostly requirement analysis will be done at each and every phase right but as a tester you are not absolutely accountable for the requirement analysis but but you should as a tester test manager test lead you should actually know what a good requirement looks like right and based on that you then go ahead and see what all requirements are there what all user stories are there that have been defined by business analysts so that you can see where the gaps are right so the factors that you should be checking in requirement analysis are atomic that the requirement should be atomic uniquely identifiable it should be complete it should be having the acceptance criteria defined properly it should be consistent it should be unambiguous it should be traceable to the the main business requirement it should be prioritized that what is the priority of this particular requirement and should be testable okay so when you read through it you should be able to come up with the scenarios it should not say okay the response time should be good right what what do we mean by response time is good response time you can basically quantify right so if a requirement says or if there is a story which says response time is good that is not testable because you can't what you can't test it you if for you a good response time could be two seconds but for business they might be looking for response time as one second as a good response time right so that level of detail should be mentioned in the requirement if it is missing that is where you as a tester needs to go through and check the requirement and see that all the good requirements requirement attributes and factors are there in the requirement and during the requirement anal analysis this is what you or the other team members go through and check in each and every requirement that the right level of information and details are present in the requirement or not if not then you provide that feedback and things get changed or things get updated from the business analyst or whosoever is managing the requirement so in the requirement analysis you just analyze validate and ensure that that all the stakeholders business analyst customer everyone based on this analysis are aligned and understand or have the same set of information that is defined in the requirement so that is what happens in requirement analysis it's more of analysis phase and in the analysis phase you check what should be what should a good requirement look like if there are any gaps you provide feedback and everyone is across it and everyone provides feedback in the requirement analysis so it could be the developer tester uh, solution architects right so everyone should be baseline to the sa same set of requirement and the details within the requirement now the last question for the part five is what is test planning okay now we have briefly touched on the test planning in question number 48 as well so test planning is the activity okay test planning is an activity in the software development life cycle wherein the lead qa or the test manager will go ahead and create a plan 
for testing. So if say for example your release is, is for three months or six months or a year, a test plan document will be created which will have the details of what will be tested, what is in scope, what will be tested, what will not be tested, what are the timelines when the testing will start and finish, who will be testing all of this, okay, how many team members will be required, then entry and exit criteria, all of those details as we have uh, already covered in one of the previous uh, interview question video, which is I think part three or four, as per the test plan template, all of that information will be filled in that word document or test plan document okay mostly it's a word document and that is what happens in the test planning so analyzing what needs to be done and then planning the whole testing across for that particular release is test planning now test planning also happens within the sprints okay so if you're following agile software development approach so test planning will also be applicable within the sprint which is two to four week cycle wherein say for example for two weeks you have been allocated or or in the sprint planning there will be some stories that are part of that particular sprint now developers will develop it testers will write test cases and finally test it right so before you go ahead and write test cases you need some sort of planning or very minimal it's it's not massive planning you don't create massive document in those two weeks right it's just high level planning and discussion with the team testing team and even including developers so basically what is in scope of as as these stories what will be tested what won't be tested as part of this scope the two week scope or four week scope uh, whatever the sprint duration is and what will be the exit criteria what will be the definition of done when we say testing is is done right or what will be the entry criteria or definition ready when we say yeah we can go ahead and start testing right so all of these details whatever we do in the big level or big release test plan we do at a smaller level and in a much quicker way and the scope is just the items the work items that are within the sprint okay so that is what the test planning is all about and test planning is important at a wider level at a major release level wherein you will do a lot of effort and a documentation is required uh, for the the release that is spanning three to six months okay and then at the sprint level as well when we say we are following agile that doesn't mean that you are not going to do documentation at all it in agile as per the project needs and whatever necessary documentation is required should definitely be done because otherwise the information gets lost right so in agile Agile doesn't say or Scrum doesn't say that you do not follow or do not do any documentation at all into your project. Scrum says or Agile says that you do only necessary documentation and get rid of any of the extra documentation and overhead that is there in terms of documentation, unnecessary documentation and process within your, your project, right? So that's what usually happens in test planning. If it is a high level, if, if it is a bigger sort of a release, a proper plan, a word document will be prepared or it will be stored in the confluence with proper template. If you are doing it for the sprint, it will be quick sort of one pager if you want to put it into the confluence or you can just go ahead and discuss and prepare some key points how you are going to approach testing into that particular sprint and deliver okay so that's what test planning is all about so that's the last question for the part 5 of manual testing interview question please go ahead share this series with all your known contacts any person who is looking for software testing job it will be helpful for them to go ahead and go through these questions and be able to explain this to the interviewer and crack the job interview so I'm, I'm very hopeful that these questions are going to help you to articulate your answers better so please go ahead share as much as you can so that it is not only remaining with you it goes ahead to more and more people out there and helps others as well so thank you and uh, i'll see you in the part six of the manual software testing interview question thank you very much